What's up everybody, welcome back to the Verted Intro YouTube channel. This is episode 11 of the Quarantine Tapes called If There Is A Will, There Is A Way. So today we're going to be reading out of Luke 5, 18 and 19 and just really focus on, not even on Jesus, but of other people that wanted to see Jesus. So the scripture says, Some men carrying a paralyzed man on a mat tried to take him into the house and lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up to the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. So kind of give you a little background of what is going on here. Um, basically, t Jesus is teaching to a whole big crowd full of Pharisees, teachers of the law, and people from all from every village of Galilee from Judea and from Jerusalem so it, it's a pretty big crowd and people are trying to get in and be with Jesus because it's Jesus everyone's heard about him the news of him has spread from land to land from village to village from person to person about this weird man just going around preaching these uh, hard teachings he's rebuking people He's being blasphemous. He's healing people. People don't know if he's from God. Don't know if he's from the devil. What this man is. If he's a prophet. If he's just a teacher. Or if he is the Messiah. People don't know. So word is continually spreading around. From village to village. Going about the, of this man. And people are coming from all around. Just to see him. And see what he does. Uh, to, to them. Or even from to people around him. So. It's just an incredible to see that people, whether they believe or not, are coming to see what is up with the situation. And then also it even says in verse um, 17 that um, the power of the Lord is with, with Jesus to heal the sick. And this is to be taken literally, the literal sick, but also figuratively to the spiritual sick. And I'll get into that a little bit in a second, but... um. That's going to be a big part. Um, the next thing is the fact that what's going on is that this man is that there's uh, two people and a paralyzed man. They're trying to get into the house where Jesus is staying in order to heal this man because they know that Jesus has the power to heal him. And they're trying to do anything that they can. But there's no way in because there's so much people around Jesus that they can't even get his attention. They're so far out. So they were, they did whatever they could. And that's where I get into the, if there's a will, there's a way. They climbed up on top of the house that Jesus was at and basically cut a hole in the middle of the house and dropped the man basically right in front of him. And um, that just shows the incredible faith, not only of the paralyzed man, but um, the people that are with him and the fact that they know that Jesus is a healer and that Jesus is here to heal them. And heal the people around him. And like that's just so incredible to and think about. Um, but the big thing too is the fact that Jesus doesn't heal him right away. The first thing he says is, I forgive you of your sins. And this is what pissed the Pharisees off the most. And basically threw everything off is that Jesus didn't heal the man right away. He forgave him of their sin, forgave him of his sins. And that's what Jesus came here to do. He didn't he came here to heal the world but he also came here to save the world he came here to bring people to god and to bring people to him through that he didn't his big thing is and he went on to say it's is it easier to heal a man because anyone can heal a man anyone like that's what we have doctors for even humans can heal humans but only god can can forgive our sins only god can heal our spiritual sickness and that's where that comes into play of the fact that he came to not only heal the wounded physically, but also heal the wounded spiritually because that he only has the power to do that. And he, that's the ultimate goal of what Jesus was, was to die on the cross in order for the, in order for him and for us to have our sins forgiven. He became what God hated the most and hates the most. He came encompassed with it in order for us to have eternal life in heaven alongside him and alongside our our um our father in heaven God. So 
really the big thing I get out of this is like, again, if there's a will, there's a way. These men did whatever they could in order to see Jesus. They climbed up on the roof and cut a hole. And that's something that just shows the, their faith in that they weren't going to let a single crowd, like a crowd of people stop them. They were going to get to Jesus no matter what. They were going to essentially break into this house in order to get to see Jesus in the flesh. And that's my big question is, if you had the opportunity to see Jesus and be with Jesus and get healed by Jesus single-handedly, would you go through every single option or would you stop at the sight of the crowd? A lot of us go into life and see a crowd of people and just say, ah, oh, I'll come back next time. But a lot of times there isn't a next time. We don't know when, if this is the last time and if, that there, if there's even going to be a next time. Like, especially for us personally, we don't know if, our day is now or if um there if there's gonna like if god's gonna take us back home now or if he's gonna take us back home in years from now and it's the same thing with jesus we don't know if he's gonna come now or if he's gonna come late years from now and that's why we it's important to have the opportunity to spend time with him now and we have that opportunity to spend time with him now and we have to take every single advantage of it so that's where I'm gonna now go into the application part. The most, for me, the most important part is basically how to do this. If there's a, again, if there is a will, there is a way. There is no such thing as a good excuse when it comes to not spending time with God. There, that's where it, being sacrificial comes into a big part of it. Um, the, reading the Bible is a huge part of our life and a huge part of our Christian walk because that is our playbook for our life. We can't expect to um, know the plays that God wants us to run if we haven't even read the playbook. A couple quotes come to my mind is one of them comes from one of my favorite songs called Enough from the Social Club Misfits. And Marty has a line in it that says, don't say God is silent if your Bible is closed. And that's so true is the fact that we like we're the ones that have to go to God. If we're not spending that time with God, why would he reach out to us? We have to go out and reach to him. Think about it in your in your shoes. It's that much more powerful if someone comes to you than if you come to them. You have to make that sacrifice and that ultimate step forward to go to him and go to them. And that's what we have to do is make that sacrifice. Um, we have to... We have to pray. We have to spend time in conversation with God. We have to make sacrifices to do that. We have to basically, we have to make the sacrifice to accept Jesus into our life and make that sacrifice to spend time with God. Then he will forgive our sins and then heal our pain. Again, there is no such thing as a good excuse of why we can't spend time with God. We have to cut time out of every single day to spend time with God. And whether it's a small time or a lot of time, that's up to you and that's up to how you want to spend your time with God. And even it, some people think spending hours with God is the best thing, but sometimes spending just 30 seconds to a minute is the best time with God because you're focused on him for that time. Sometimes when we go, oh, I spent an hour with God, but how, or like I spent an hour in Bible study, but how much did you really spend focusing on God in that hour? Were you on your phone for 59 minutes of that hour? And that's something that we need to take into account. And I encourage you guys, if you're not doing it, start start small. And if that means waking up 10 minutes earlier or staying up 10 minutes later before you go to bed, that's what you have to do. And that's something that shows your love and your faith towards God is in that making that sacrifice. And again, I'm going to end it on this. If you had a chance to see to be with God, to interact with Jesus, would you go through every single option in order to see him or would you stop at that big crowd? Lord, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for allowing us to spend time with you, giving us the opportunity. We are full of sin, but yet you came here to save us. You heal our pain and you heal us spiritually. Lord, a lot of us are struggling with finding time. Help us cut out the time for you in order for our for us to grow in you and glorify you in everything we do. You are the ultimate healer, our ultimate savior, 
and you forget and you died on the cross in order for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you so much. I pray all this in your son's glorious awesome name. Amen. So again, just spend time with God, whether it's a minute to 10 minutes, start small because if you sometimes with the marathon you you have to walk before you run. And that's the same thing with God. You can't just go running into it. You have to walk before you're able to run. And you have to crawl before you're able, even able to walk. So whether it's, and just don't stop. Continually moving forward, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be that big crowd. But go through every single option. And if you have to climb onto a roof and cut a hole in, into it in order for you to see Jesus, do that. Go through that. Make sacrifices. Break boundaries because we serve the ultimate boundary breaker. So as always, thank you. Share this with someone. Always sub subscribe, hit the notification button and smash that like button. It truly helps me. It truly helps this platform to grow and it helps me reach other people. So as always, peace and love.